the northern lights. Lights, lights. Baby, you just kick your feet up while I kick back. I roll one with you by my side. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Bold Black and Addicted to Bravo, because I am Bold Black and Addicted to Bravo. Um, I have some fellow Bravo-holics with me today, and we're going to discuss a topic that's really um, being talked about a lot, which is a good thing, but a lot right now because of what's happening on Potomac. So we're going to talk about uh, colorism and the complexities of complexion. Uh, but before we get started, I'm going to have everyone just introduce themselves and tell everyone a little bit about where they can find you. Um, Giselle, do you want to start? Yeah. Hey, everybody. I am Zell from the Who Asked Me podcast, um, Who Asked Me podcast on Instagram and wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, Kira? Um, hi, my name is Kara. Um, I'm just a Bravo fan uh, from Toronto, a makeup artist, and in my downtime, I love to watch all of the housewives. Uh, Stephanie? Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie from Steph and Key TV, and I love to watch Bravo, talk about Bravo on Instagram and on TikTok. And Kalundi. I'm Kalindi. I co-host Housewives Heretics with my best friend Josh, and I'm tired by Bravo right now. So I'll say <laughs> this time. Did you say you're tired by Bravo? Yeah, they're wearing me out. <laughs> it's it's been a lot. Like on one hand, I've enjoyed that we've had like some real much needed conversations over the past couple seasons, but it does get like a little bit heavy. And I'm glad that there's been some like international. Like I started watching the Durban. I don't know if anyone mm-hmm. else was watching the hospital. And like, that's a little bit lighter. I mean, mm-hmm. the, I don't know if anyone else has watched it, but somebody is Eskimo sisters with somebody else and there's a love child and it's, it's some things, but it's, it's good watching. It's not as like heavy and serious. And I think it's also because while there's like a whole bunch of topics that's frequently talked about, when it doesn't affect you, I think is what makes it feel a little bit lighter. And I think mm-hmm. that especially for those of us in like the BIPOC community, like the topics being talked about affect us. So we're, they feel heavier to us. You know, yeah. I'm sure there's an Eskimo sister out there who feels heavy by that topic. I don't, I'm cool watching that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when you talk about other things, it feels deeper to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about colorism. If you missed, I've discussed it before. Um, so if you missed the previous episode, check it out. It's called The Lens of Colorism. Um, and I did that one with Zell and um, Kalundi. And that was a great t- topic. And we talked about it last year because of what was happening on Potomac. And it, it continues, which is not surprising because if you don't address an issue, it will continue. And it definitely wasn't addressed. And part of it is because people keep denying it. So let me ask you guys, first of all, like why? Well, actually, let's start with this. How would you define colorism? Um, I'll go ahead and start. For me, colorism, I just spoke about this, uh, is a subsection of racism. And I was actually also watching a, um, like the Vogue, like, um, documentary on YouTube about black models. And it is, while it's a subsection of racism to me, um, they mentioned that it can hurt more than racism. And I agree because it can, ha- it happens within our own community. Um, you know, colorism can be anything from judging and having unconscious biases because of um, someone is darker to even a lighter complex complexion. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Anyone else? Um, I, I was going to say that um, I completely Um, think that's a like an apt description of colorism Um, and I think the other thing that I think about when I think of um, colorism is that it's clearly it's internalized anti-blackness 110 percent so with the unconscious biases you're associating um, a lot of negative traits with blackness Mm -hmm. therefore someone is perceived treated or um, just overall looked at differently because of the color of their skin but then you can also go a a little bit deeper and and you might get into the texture of their hair or the way that their um facial features are their phenotypes um which i think is also kind of a subset of colorism which derives from racism 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's interesting because I think a lot of times when we think about colorism is we think of the negative opinions and aspects thrown at darker skinned people, but you know, it does go both ways. Um, there is some towards the lighter skin, but do you guys, for you, and what I'm interested to know is like, it's definitely something that happens, but it's almost to me like when people say like reverse racism, like like racism is a thing and yes there are like stereotypes and negative things that are presented towards white people but it's not really reverse racism mm -hmm. so is that do you feel the same way about colorism like when it's like if a lighter skin person claims colorism do you think that's valid or do you think it's more towards more like kind of like reverse racism where it's not really a thing i personally don't think it's really a thing um in my opinion i th i think I think it's one thing to maybe have had painful experiences or to have like experienced disrespect um, because you're fairer in complexion, but to act as though the treatment is the same because you are fairer in complexion is completely not true in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I would I would liken it to reverse racism. Like that's not like, exactly that colorism. Like you don't. Yeah. And I, I also would liken it to when people say I don't have white privilege because, you know, I'm broke and I'm not rich and, you know, I'm just like you, but it's like, no, like, even though you're not rich, you still benefit from the color of your skin. Like you still, there's unconscious bias there. You still can do things that black people can't do. So I would liken that to, to the same as when light-skinned people say that, well, I, I'm affected by colorism as well. And I, I'm just like, no, <laughs> not the same, not even anywhere near close. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely agree. I try to like empathize. And I re recently said this about like Ashley from Potomac. I feel like Ashley denies colorism as a whole because she's a mixed woman. And I feel like she thinks by denying that there's a colorist issue or admitting, sorry, admitting that there's a colorist issue or colorism issue, she thinks that she can't, it doesn't make her um, experiences as a mixed lighter skinned woman valid. And that's not true. Um, you know, my brother is lighter complected. Um, you know, he, he heard things all of his life. But to say that they are the to the extent of a darker skin person would be absolutely, you know, ridiculous. He it was more so, you know, I, I know like the comments as in, you know, high yellow, as people used to say, um, more so in the black community. Those are definitely hurtful, but they're not. I, I think it would be remiss to act like they are treated the same as someone who is darker complected. Um and that's just, it doesn't deny anybody's experience. And I understand what, you know, anybody with a lighter skin complexion would say, oh, well, I've never been, you know, black enough for the black people or white enough for white people or anything like that. But there is often, often, often a negative connotation around being darker complected. And it's just not the same as the, you know, perception of being lighter. Mm -hmm. I'd agree. Uh, Kalundi? Yeah, I have... totally agree. I think, and I think Robin and Giselle also have that issue that Zell mentioned with Ashley, because we see, not that they're biracial, I, they're Black, but so many times, especially in early seasons, they're saying like, we have green eyes, but that doesn't matter as they, because they feel like they have to prove themselves or something, but they're still not getting the same experience that could put them in danger like dark yeah. complected people well i feel like robin and giselle also like they think that they want to be black but they want to be better than mm -hmm. black they see i feel like just from watching them on my television screen i cannot speak for these women but i feel like when i see them um i i can tell giselle was always told her entire life um you know oh no you you not you not black like them. You black, but you not black like other. Don't let them other girls. Don't get influenced. Like you, you're better than Robin. I think is uh, obtuse. I really do. I can't put a finger on whether you know. I heard that she has said some things, but I just I can tell that 
Giselle has had that been told that her entire life, like she is some type of black unicorn. And it <laughs> that is what always irks me about her because it's like, you, you're like, yeah, I'm black, but you say it as in like, I'm black, but. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because isn't her, was it her father, her grandfather, who was very much involved in the civil rights movement? Um, her so, her yeah, dad. her dad. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, she's definitely identified with her black side and she even says that she carries it with a stamp of pride. But I think, you know, like you were saying that I'm better than we do it so much as a society where we attribute white characteristics to like positive characteristics and black ones to negative. So even, you know, I've talked about it before on here. I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood and I'd be told, you know, you're an Oreo, you speak like a white girl. And it's like, why does speaking a certain way, like, why is that a white person thing? Like, why can't Mm -hmm. I just be like an articulate black person? Like, why is that a white characteristic and white trait? And I think that a lot of people, a lot of a, a lot of us grew up with that, you know, like if you're acting a certain type of way and it's positive, you're being more like adjacent to whiteness than you are to blackness, which in and of itself is saying that the blackness is, is all of the negative sides. And so I do think like when you have like a Giselle and a Robin, that's when they want to, to distance themselves from things like that. Mm-hmm. Well, and didn't Robin find out in her ancestry that she is half white? <laughs> she was more, like 50%. She's she's yeah. I mean, you don't get that light <laughs> without having a little bit of, of white in you somewhere. Yeah. yeah Katie, I mean, Katie yeah. told her she and she tried to deny it. she was like ma'am you he's know. like you need to get your genealogy <laughs> yeah. I mean even if both of your parents are black if they at one point were mixed then you're going to come down exactly to not going to be lighter exactly and that you know that's the thing and the way it's the way Robin and Giselle carry themselves and the way they carry themselves towards other people I feel like is important. You know, Robin just gave an interview and I don't know if she has a PR person or doesn't have one, but I'm like, where she lied. Yeah. Lied to saying, I just didn't want Wendy to do something that she was going to regret. You literally told her if you're going to fight her, just do it. There's, you can't sit here, Robin, we've watched you get into people's faces, whether I think anybody, you know, her, I know Monique told her, come over here and do something. She walked over. I got that. The implicate, the, the consequences of Robin fighting in the, you know, how it's viewed versus Wendy fighting or hell Monique fighting are different, are different. And, you know, that's why she's been able to skate by with not, um, you know, getting called out for her actions and the fact that she's kind of boring. Yeah, and Robin has been notoriously very aggressive. And that's sort of what has always bugged me about Robin. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest, I've been feeling a little bit of glee lately and everybody <laughs> else finally calling her out because I just want to be like, I told you so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, because she is, she can be kind of boring. Um, like you mentioned, um, she gets like the whole, oh, she's so peaceful. She's the peacemaker. She's the reasonable one. And yes, sometimes, but for the most part, she's right there with with um Giselle and all her antics and then once she gets angry she's up in people's faces she was in Ashley's mm-hmm. face she was in Monique's face like she like it's a matter of seeing her activated or not because yeah she doesn't keep her calm when she's angry when she's angry she instantly starts yelling like everybody else she gets in people's faces like everybody else the only difference is normally she's just out of it or just keeping to the sides but once she's in it She's in it and she's nasty and she's rude and she does silly things like inviting kids to a party when you don't invite the parent, which I totally still don't understand. Um, we had yeah. so when Wendy and Robin are beefing right now, which is also silly because the reason for their beef was because they tried to have a rumor about Wendy's husband. Wendy shut it down by dragging them both and I think Robin is still healing from the burn she received from that drag. And yeah. She let it go. Like, can I, can I, go. can I jump in with something about yeah. that? Because as I'm watching this season and you can literally see Robin's disdain for Wendy, like all over her face, every single time they have a scene, mm-hmm. I'm like, you're just mad that she cleared the fuck out of you last season. And like, you're still not over it. 
Mm -hmm. And it's, so it's like you're carrying that with you. So now every single time you guys have an interaction, you're always trying to almost kind of like goad her into having an argument with you again so that you can try to, you know, get your get back at her. But you're not good at arguing. She never has been if you've ever like paid attention mm -hmm. to the seasons like she can't really um, articulate herself very well in an argument. Mm -hmm. yeah. She kind of gets frustrated and then shuts down or she'll get frustrated. And that's okay. And that's, that's, that's aggressive. Me. That's okay. Like, that's me. like, I'm very, mm -hmm. like, I'm normally articulate and poised. Like, but if I get angry, like, I don't know what to say. Like, I just don't argue exactly. with people. Which I'll is, cry. Which is totally, all, that's embarrassing. Which is totally okay. Just know that about yourself. Just right? understand that and also understand that Wendy doesn't act that way when right. it, and she can right. still carry her, you know, maintain her composure and articulate herself, you know, much more succinctly and clearly than you can. Mm -hmm. But you like, that's not something to be mad at Wendy about. Mm -hmm. Right. And well, I think that it, it brings up that whole colorism aspect of the fact that because it's Wendy that is dragging the floor with her. Like when the other girls do it, it's upsetting, but because it's Wendy, and I think also we see, cause Giselle also doesn't have an excuse for having real beef with Wendy. But I think as you were saying, Zal, where, you know, she's always been the unicorn. She's always been the, you know, a little bit better. And I think now you have this very well-educated, very well-employed black woman who talks about her degrees. And I think she makes Giselle feel a little bit inferior to mm -hmm. her and Giselle does not like that. Well, to okay, to walk it back just a couple steps about Robin. My thing was, as we saw with Robin in Ashley season one, as Robin's family, Juan, the boys, obviously, but especially the Juan situation, that triggers her in a different way because of everything they went through, obviously. Um, and what I will say about Robin is she is an Aries like myself. However, I'm better with words than Robin because sometimes I'll be looking at Robin like, Okay, like, mm -hmm. come on now. Like, you do. so the, and the thing with Wendy also, because Wendy just gave an interview to Carlos King and said, me and Robin had a friendship. And I knew that because I remember she said that. And I also remember uh, when I put two and two together, I said, that's why she, well, that's why Robin caught that stray bullet from her last mm -hmm. year at the cabin or whatever, when she was drunk on the couch. And I know because I have, Robin tries to stay too neutral sometimes, mm -hmm. but then has been off to the side, like, even like she just said, oh yeah, actually Candace told me about that rumor about uh, Michael when they were, and it's like, girl, okay, you should have just been quiet. Right. Robin texted Wendy about those rumors from the blog because that blog also notoriously talks about one and things like that and said, hey girl, like, did you see these? Wendy said, girl, yeah, I saw them, blah, blah. I think that Wendy has been wanting like sisterhood friendship from these women since she came on obviously her first season that fight happened with Monique and like I say this all the time I like Wendy I like kind of forget that she was there because mm -hmm. this is that everything that happened that season right. with Monique and Candace and ugh, like I forget you know I feel bad but then like I feel like it was she tries to make friends she tried even I felt when she we they got to Miami she was in good spirit she was talking to everybody she was trying in like the thing about Robin is she's an Aries and she'll carry a bone, but she is, I think she's a social person because I will do this. But when I have a problem with somebody and I'm in a group setting with them, I don't care. I'm not about to bring down anybody else's vibe. Just don't bring down mine. If we find ourselves in a conversation, that's fine. I kind of noticed that with Wendy and Robin in the car from the airport, they were talking just fine, but then Robin gets around other people. And so like Giselle, and that's why she caught that stray bullet is because you ran up behind Giselle instead of standing your ground being like, well, hey, I talked to her. She said it. She and she did say that she was like, I talked to her. She said there was nothing. But then why do you have to talk about her body? Why do you have to say like, oh, she just seems a little bit more loose. That is a terrible word to use mm -hmm. when sure. surrounding with what we're talking about. And it's just like. She wants to get off on, and that she does get off on, staying to the side and being like, oh, I'm I'm neutral. I didn't say anything. Giselle said this, but that's your buddy. And you follow up behind her and kiki kaka with her. That's how you caught that stray fucking bullet. Excuse and, me. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's you, how you caught that. <laughs> to your point, when uh, Robin was in the car with Wendy, Giselle wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So they were able to get along. And then all of a sudden we get to dinner Robin's like cheering me on and Wendy's the problem. 
And it was just like, what happened? And like, this is my problem with Robin. Like, we, like, you were cool the beginning of this season. I was like, she was being reasonable. She was being smart. And then all of a sudden she switches and she goes back to being Giselle's flunky. And now all of a sudden, Wendy's the problem when she got a drink thrown on her. It's just like, I well, can't yeah. with Robin. I can't. <laughs> even when, even when she dinner. said that Chris needed to apologize to Giselle or that, uh, that Candace needed to get, I was like, Girl, this is why Chris didn't want to hug you. Yeah. Right. So right, right. in that. He was very right in that because he recognized like, nah, this is Giselle's girl. This mm-hmm. is Giselle's girl. You cannot say you want to separate your two separate people and then you run up behind her because at the end of the day, when it comes to my husband and allegations or a drink getting thrown in my face or you texting me trying to act like a friend and then you show me something different, we're done. Yeah, I want to talk about specifically the dinner, but before... Since you mentioned the Chris thing, like I find this whole, and I'm normally a champion for like the victim and the me too mm-hmm. and the, all of that. But I firmly stand with Candace on this one um, because it is ludicrous. Like, I almost want to be like, Giselle, do you hear the words coming out of your mouth? You literally said we needed to talk. So I invited him up to the room and then I felt uncomfortable. So I asked him to leave and he left. So where's the uncomfortableness in that? Like where Mm -hmm. out of that whole story, are you pulling being a victim in there? Like, where are you pulling that? He made you feel uncomfortable. You guys went to talk. You asked him to leave. He immediately left. And he even said he asked the door to be open. And even if he didn't, like you asked him to leave and he left, Mm -hmm. he did what he was supposed to do. He was the good guy in that situation. And on top, and on top of trying to make him bad. Yeah. And on top of that, you wait until you guys start filming to mention it. If you were really uncomfortable about something, something something moved you to chorus so much that you had to talk about it. Why wouldn't you have spoken with Candace off camera if it was really that important to you? Number right. one. And number two, I think the the other thing that's even more disgusting about it, it only reinforces what so many of us think where it's like, she doesn't care about Candace. Mm-hmm. Right. She doesn't care about Chris either. She could take or leave them. And there she goes throwing them under the bus. They're so, what's the word? They're so in, they're so dispensable, dispensable. to her. Yeah. I mean, I really do so think she views everybody. Wait. Yeah. Now I was gonna say, I really do think she views everybody as like cast members, like not friends. Like mm-hmm. this is the cast and she's there to do her job and cause the antics. And if that's like, the case, if that's the case, then don't be acting stank every single time you see Wendy. Cause if you guys uh-oh. are cast members, Wendy's just doing her job. Right. Yeah. And and Giselle has changed her story to your, like, when you said Mm -hmm. the very beginning, she said, I asked, Chris wanted to talk. So I said, let's go into my room because I thought, Right, my, she admitted I it. I thought beginning. that my makeup people were there. Mm-hmm. Then I found out they weren't. Then I got uncomfortable. Now it's Chris knew nobody was in my room, and he asked me to go to my room. I'm like, girl, you right. know, mm-hmm. we're, like, we're recording this, right? We can see you lying. This is crazy. Well, to it's me. still, <laughs> still the story she tells. Uh, she says Chris wanted to talk, going back to my room, and then she tells I think Karen, like, well, actually, he knew that my makeup and people weren't mm-hmm. there because he said bye to Cal. You didn't say, let's, yes, let's go back to my room because the makeup, the team is in there. And right. moreover, he just said, can we talk? Right. He just said, can we talk? It could have been, you could have said, yeah, let's step over here. Yeah, exactly. let's say, and it, it, like you said, Nehemiah, it pains me because I would never, ever, ever be on a man's side in this situation. Right. That is why she <laughs> is pissing me off because, mm-hmm. girl, this does happen to people and it is tragic. It's disgusting and mm-hmm. here you are you keep moving the story and then now we're talking about oh he touched somebody's butt who said but i the whole time i was like you did you did it. you said it giselle you gotta be fucking kidding me right now because this isn't funny and every i think with giselle like her real problem is because we're kind of getting actually no i was gonna compare her to kenya but no this isn't kenya never went out of her way to do cause these issues this is the third cast member that she wants to talk about their husbands okay she was talking about chris and monique in the church she picked or yeah chris and monique in the trainer she picked that up with the quickness then it was wendy and eddie then it was now it's candace and chris she is so giselle is so gung-ho on somebody's man cheating on them because what had happened to her mm-hmm. okay and i really think she can't believe that it happened to her like how dare that happen to me 
okay, to me. I really think that's what's in that lady's brain. Because Do you think any colorism plays into that? Yes. Do you think it just happens to be No, that? I think, I because I th- also think of their, you know, status of being in the church. You know, if you talk to people who went to that church um, when Giselle and Jamal were married, they say, like, she's still acting like the Giselle we know, you know, running around. And honestly, that's probably a great character for TV, but I really think that she thinks, like, this was not supposed to happen to me. I am Giselle. I am, you know, the black unicorn. I am, you know, I, I really think she, she the never could have thought that. And I think that like distorts her view on things, mm-hmm. but you yeah, can't I- talk about everybody's husband and expect not to. Cause I hate when people also say like, why do we have to attack Giselle for not having she a man? Starts it. Because no, no, no. I'm going to hit you where you hit me. Okay. Right. You want to talk about me and my man? I'm going to talk about you and your lack of one since you're so concerned about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she definitely opens those floodgates. And like I said, we're going to jump back into the colorism, but I did want to touch on that because that's such an important thing. And when Candace says like, you're an example of what's wrong with, um, I forgot exactly how she phrased it, um, but as far as champion people, and Giselle's like, no, I'm the reason people come forth. Like, no, you're not. You are one of those people who makes it harder for mm-hmm. women because now yeah. here is an example on television of you making false accusations and lying about this guy mm-hmm. now it's on camera so now every guy who gets an accusation is going to be like well here's all these people who yeah. lie even though it's statistically proven only three percent of allegations are false mm-hmm. guys will go with that especially when there's an example of it. and it's really unfortunate to see that mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and i think it's unfortunate too that we have an example of michael darby who did allegedly do things and did not face any consequences. No one refused to film with Ashley. She wasn't getting like kicked off, nothing. But now you're going to go through every text, every single interaction to try to fabricate a story and to try to make Chris look like a predator. It's just, it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Ashley it should is. literally never talk about anybody's husband making anybody feel and I hate I to say so that but like her because I thought she was doing so well her and Candace were making up and then she came with the mm-hmm. see it doesn't feel so good and I was like oh there it is that was of course, Candace said there it is because there it is like it is and I knew I I knew exactly what Ashley was about to pull when she heard, when the camera panned over to her and she, we heard uh, Candace say, Michael Darby's available for that. That look on Ashley's face. I said, she finna do some. I said, she finna pull some shit. Because okay. <laughs> and, and my thing with Ashley, she so wouldn't say, that's the father of my kids. You had kids with him after all right. of that stuff. You chose the father of your kids, not us. Right. And you also you, tell him to act better. Don't tell me to right. not use him as an example. And it's unfortunate too, because they clearly have been very like open or she has been open about their explorative adults time. And I'm all for that. Let your freak flag fly. I love that that that. for you, but consensually. Mm -hmm. So like, it's unfortunate that he is also on the side of touching people when they don't want, because that's not part of the freak flag flying. Like that's being a predator. It's not the same thing. Like if they want to have all the three sums, invite all the people, do all the things, that's fine. But you don't get to go around touching other people that don't want to be touched and think that that's okay because it's not okay. And I also think Ashley doesn't get called out for obvious reasons because like she literally said after that stuff happened with the um, producer, she said, well, him and Michael have that type of relationship. I am married. If I tell my husband, don't touch me, I don't want to do that tonight, he ought not. Like, hello, it doesn't matter if they have had a flirtatious relationship in the past or whatever. Like, I was like, do y'all listen to the words that come out of this lady's mouth? For Mm -hmm. real, for real, because they are problematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's not just colorism on the show. It's also like racism and white white privilege. Can we talk about Mm -hmm. the fact that Michael Darby has never been asked to leave this set, has never been lectured. Andy will sit Candace down and tell her she's a trash on social media and that people yeah. want her fired. No one has ever called Michael Darby to be fired for multiple sexual allegations and for yes. his repeated on camera touching people without their permission. And he's been allowed more like and then they welcome him. Andy has mm-hmm. welcomed him. The guys have welcomed him onto the show. But the women are constantly berated, threatened to be fired their mouths and he's yeah. put his hands on people like that yeah. still I mean I think that that's my like racism mind. and sexism right in there too mm-hmm. yeah I do Ugh. think him being a man is also part of why he gets away with it a yeah. white man yeah yeah and Michael he's also, and he's rich you yes. know that's the trifecta of bad behavior yeah. getting yeah. away with Michael is also man. aggressive 
become yeah. he's aggressive because did you guys hear about him showing up in uh or not showing up he was in the bahamas at the same resort as oh, this candace. Um, candace and like what happened what transpired uh, i just heard that he was there and there was a video footage of him talking to someone he, he but, was there i'm like were you were you coincidentally there or did you hear about her being there and then you went to go see her and confront her because you want to be messy like I no feel- so candace said on her because i got on her live she said that she's pretty sure he frequents that like that's a really popular resort that they were at mm-hmm. now she said she said she doesn't think that he went she said she hopes because that would be very weird and concerning but um, she said she had been on the roster. Like if you're, a, if you've been to that resort before, you know, they were promoting her being there. So he could have, we, she doesn't know, but what happened was he, it was her performance. There was rain. So there was a delay when they first walked b- that night. But when they first walked in to the resort, I guess she said that Chris was like, is that, and they were like, uh, and they had had like a couple run-ins, her and her friend were walking and he like, like sped off and then to get in front of them and like it's like okay that night he like was somebody who works for her I can't remember who she said also with braids in her hair went up to tell him like you you need to go you need to go and he was so drunk apparently he thought it was her and Mm -hmm. she he went off on this woman Candace said that she wouldn't even tell her at first what he was saying because it was so disturbing and disgusting And then he was saying stuff to her and she was like, what are you talking about? I didn't do that. And he thought that he was talking to Candace. Mm. He thought he was talking to Candace when he was talking to this woman. And then she was really shaken up. And then there was a can the ET was there. There was a camera crew. So they think that maybe he thought the like record the they were Potomac. Yeah. And so, cause he sat right in front of the stage right in front of the stage when she was about to mm -hmm, go on yeah weird disturbing disturbing um just can we just like put it out there like michael is a racist i was gonna say have we seen a picture of this woman did they even look alike no i i saw her from behind and i knew immediately that wasn't candace and can we talk about the fact that people often try to act like dating a minority instantly means you're not racist like mm-hmm. not not true at, at all. all there are people who definitely still are absolutely despite dating there just like how there's people who are black who are so far in the deep the sunken place that they don't mm-hmm. realize it and they will do racist things and say racist things and I know for me not that I was that bad but you know I've talked about how I've had to make a journey to accepting my blackness and not viewing things bad because of the environment that I grew up around. And it wasn't necessarily hateful black. It wasn't Mm -hmm. like black people are awful, but it was like, oh, there are people going to jail. They're probably black. Like, oh, they have bad jobs. Well, you know, they need to work harder. Just like little things that people don't like to admit, but in certain societies and certain areas, that's just what you grow up thinking. And it's not because you want to be like, oh, they're horrible people, but you literally just think like those are black traits. And that's just how it is until you really have to program yourself to realize that that's not how it is and more importantly the places where it is that way it's for a reason and mm-hmm. that reason is usually the resources were ripped away from them and so it's cause and effect we all but- have something to unlearn like mm-hmm. we all have to unlearn you learn stuff and then you have to unlearn it as you you know grow up and that that that's important and it's good to i feel like it's good to admit too because oftentimes i feel like people like were quick to criticize but then not remember like, okay, there was some things for me, it was never like anti-blackness just because my mom was very, she was drilling it into us. Um, you know, of course there were some things here and there, but for me, it was like mostly with like kind of women and things like that. Like why you know, internalize misogyny, um, things like that, but we all have to unlearn some stuff. Now to throw your business out there a little bit. So you're in, um, a swirl relationship. Mm-hmm. For some reason, the actual word, Interracial. My, that's the word, yeah. it escaped yeah. my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, do you like, how, how, I don't want to be like, oh, how's that been? But like, how have you, have you seen like the effects of that? Especially because you are so vocal in your blackness. Do you ever get called out for that? Like, oh, you're so pro-black, but you're dating a white man. Like, does that impact um, you? 
No, I have never been called out to my face. Um, somebody might have said it behind my back. I don't know. That's not my business. I mean, I welcome that conversation, respectful, because I'm not a person that I've been with a, a lot of men. And my boyfriend before my husband, before I started dating my husband, my boyfriend was black. He was Jamaican. You know what I mean? So I've I've always been with um different types of men, mostly black men, honestly. But I don't I have I'm trying to put this wisely. I have taught, I've been, vo- I am vocal about it. I have talked more, um, especially with my husband, more so he just showing him things. Um, obviously, cause I've been, I've been approached by white men who like fetishize black women yeah. and that I do, I would never, ever, ever get down with. Um, but like, we've had to have talks with like his mom and stuff about not saying things. Oh shit. I probably shouldn't have said that. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, but there have been struggles. Um, we all have to unlearn. Like, you yeah, said, as you far know? as, as far as from the black community, not a lot because a lot of, we have the same friend group. So a lot of our friends, um, knew my husband and, you know, he's always open to having conversations. He is a restaurant manager. So like, there've been some things where I'm like, you should not say that. Like he will have like a table of one time he had a table of black women called the server a bitch. <laughs> obviously that's not okay. And yeah. so he went over, he was like, Hey, is there a problem? Like you can't be calling our server a bitch. Like, like you can't say that, you know, if there's another issue, we're gonna have to ask you to leave. And then he, they were like, Oh, you're a fucking racist. You're a fucking racist. Blah, blah. Yeah. And he was like, I'm not racist. My wife I was like, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that don't say that <laughs> i was like don't say that and he was like well i was like just because you date somebody doesn't mean that you're not racist mm-hmm. you know what i mean it that's not how it works so it's more so like opening being open in conversation as long as it's respectful for me mm-hmm. that's good and then i want since i'm throwing out people's business so kilindy you are biracial but obviously you look a lot more on like the lighter side and we talked a little bit about how we feel like Ashley has a hard time acknowledging the colorism because she feels like if she acknowledges then it sort of like takes away from her her struggles or whatever and um I think that that sometimes applies to to colorism as well but do you notice that from being on like the the lighter side of it like does it impact the way you ever interact with others or do you feel like more judgment um, from either side of it, the white side or the black side, because of your coloring. Um, I think that well, from white people especially, there that you will say more inappropriate things around me, like more racist things, and then I'll be like, uh, "What are you talking about?" But not really. I don't know. I think that it's that Kara put it so perfectly that you can be disrespected, disrespected. You can be hurt. That doesn't say that you don't have a bad experience. But no one's following me around in a store. You know, I'm not getting pulled over because a cop sees me driving. That's different. And that's not fair to act like that I am having the same experience as any biracial or other Black person. So Mm -hmm. I just think it's really important. And that actually being young, not that only young people are more enlightened, but it is more of a conversation in these current times so I think that it's so important if you're going to talk about different franchises and how race plays into those, you should also look in the mirror and say it's also taking place here, not in the same way, but this is still important and I can learn too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it's a great learning experience and it's unfortunate that they want to pretend like it's not there. And I, I feel like this is such a needed conversation and I truly hope that either Andy really educates himself before the reunion to have that or brings in somebody who can have that conversation because it's one of the few times where you can really have that um because we didn't see it as much with atlanta and, and i mean when i think about atlanta is mostly dark girls and i think that's why that, exactly Honestly, yeah because even with kim zolziak there was some accusations but she was never like the one in power if that makes sense you know it wasn't the power dynamic where it's all white women and garcelle or mm-hmm. all white women and Asian women in Garcelle. There's right. always such a big power dynamic that is definitely more white in all of the other franchises. Yeah. Well, I and then, thankfully, like Kim was leaving when, you know, after the reunion, then they called her out for her racism. Yeah. So that was good that she was mm-hmm. exiting. But I think the fact that like Andy was like 
clear about what was going on, but then later on said he should have stuck up for Kim <laughs> and then yeah. people called called him out on it, right. which is a very important reason as to why I feel like he should not be hosting this coming reunion because it's Agreed. even more heightened now, the colorism it talk. Is. And yeah. he, I don't feel like he will take the time to educate himself. He needs to have someone else there. He just won't do it because he didn't do it last time when they talked right. about it. He like lets them handle it and they're not mm -hmm. going to have a proper discussion about this. They just won't. Yeah. I and, wish they would bring in like Ebony to do oh, yeah, it. Or like Garcelle. Yeah. Great. I think like that would be that would be amazing. Um yeah. and yeah, and it's it's unfortunate that they don't talk about it as much as they should in the reunion. And I hope I hope that as we go into it that they do. Um, and then what I really also wanted to break down though was that dinner on the last episode. There's just so I my jaw dropped when Robin said to Wendy that you're being a or did she say that in He's so antagonistic. antagonistic. I was like, excuse me, like did I step out of this real world for a moment? How does someone getting a drink thrown on her? make her antagonistic and you'll even you'll see so many other conversations too like when robin and um wendy argue where wendy is so calm mm -hmm. even at that winery wendy was so calm while the other two were just yelling up a storm and wendy was keeping it calm and on this she was trying to keep it calm as well mia i don't know i think mia's kind of a clown but in like kind of <laughs> in like a good way like i find her wow. entertaining for the show, I think about Mia the way I think about Dr. Heavenly and Married to Medicine, which is like, they're like a character on a show, right? So I take her for what she brings to the show, not for who she would be as an actual person in real life, because I couldn't deal with that. But for bringing stuff to the show, it is what it is. But like that dinner was on another level because she was yelling, first of all, it was Peter's problem. So why are you getting involved? And then, she was saying like, you should have told him, like why does she have to report to Peter that she's in town? Like the whole thing was just absurd. And then the throwing drinks, I just felt like Maya or Mia was just doing like this little thing in her head, like just rolling a scene versus Wendy who was having an actual moment. And then you have freaking frack over there like cheering it on. And earlier when I said um, Robin lied is because Robin recently gave an interview where she was like, Oh, well, I was just trying to help her realize that, you know, she had bigger things to worry about. Oh, and I didn't want Wendy to blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you pulled out your camera exactly. for laughing and yeah. cheering on the fight. So, and you know, yelling, yeah. you're only, you didn't thing, record me, you recorded her. And you record, you started recording after the drink got thrown. Like, so to say, cause I saw somebody, I, I read the comment sections of these things. And I, I think that like, this lens, this viewing this show as a white person, like I've, mm. been, I've been noticing the comments from white people versus the comments from black people. And I'm like, and like, this is my thing. You can have an opinion on a show. However, once somebody within the community or multiple people, honestly, within the community say, actually, this is a situation, a whole situation that you don't understand. I think that that's when it's time to, you know, kind of shut up and up. listen because white people are viewing this non-black people are viewing this as like okay xyz i don't even really know how you can view that not being black and just try and justify what uh mia did but i saw somebody say like Rob, everybody complained that they didn't know like where everything started between Monique and Candace last year. So Robin just pulled out her camera. So, ev so they didn't have to wait for the footage and they could look at it over again. And I was like, I'm sorry if I said you're dumb. Maybe I meant you're stupid in the words of Katie Rose, because <laughs> right, like, right. are you, do you, did you hear that? I'm like, and you're you recording need to, one side of it. You so are recording helpful. one side. You're recording. You took the, you took your camera out. After Wendy got up, Robin didn't take her camera out after the drink was thrown because honestly, even after the drink was thrown, she was still Wendy sitting. stayed seated. How I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I can't. I there is no way, no way. But she still stayed seated until when Wendy got up. That's when Robin took her phone out. You are trying to create a false narrative and anybody trying to, I don't care if you're annoyed with Wendy. I don't care if you don't like how much he talks. I don't, but I find, I find people who are so annoyed by Wendy 
very weird. Like the people who have like, like a strong opinion against her, very weird because not for nothing, Wendy hasn't given us a whole lot to be that annoyed by. Mm -hmm. And even when she talks about her degrees, it's usually because she's trying to defend, like it's her go-to defense mechanism. It's not like she's just rolling in like, hello, welcome to dinner. I have four degrees. It's usually that you said something (laughs) stupid and now she's trying to counteract it with the fact that I have degrees. So I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I, I just find it weird. Like I, I really do. And you know, everybody, Wendy in that mouth, your issue, you might want to take a double look because you're going to talk about Wendy in that mouth or Candace in her mouth. When will, are you telling me you just want to hear people who aren't that, that smart, like argue because like Giselle don't make no sense. Robin don't make no sense. Ashley, she plays mental gymnastics to try and get her point across. Karen barely says anything anymore. So like, yeah, what happened to Karen this season? Like, where is uh, she? Karen, Karen yeah, is also chilling. Karen <laughs> also got on her. She's she is starting to piss me off because these aren't your kids, Karen. She takes the approach like two wrongs don't make a right. She said that somebody asked her like why she stayed neutral. She said, "I absolutely think the drink throwing was wrong, but Wendy was saying some things about G after. I don't care. I don't care. I don't. I do think though that." This does lend to why I feel like you have to pick a lane with the housewives, an age lane, right? Because you have Karen, who's what, in her 50s? 59. 59, with Ashley, who's younger than the Summer House crew, which I didn't even realize until late. I know. Ashley's only like 34, you know? So that's it. What? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Kyle is 40. Lindsay is 46. Carl's 30 something like she's younger than the summer house crew so yeah when you have someone who's 60 hanging out with someone in their early 30s they could be her kids so on some level she's going to kind of talk to them like that oh my god and I don't mind her mix Candace is older than Ashley oh yeah Ashley's the youngest (laughs) Ashley yeah like and I don't mind a mix of ages but when you have that large of a range you're going Mm -hmm. to get that and Mm -hmm. I wish they would I like my housewife's older and you know but i've talked about that before but if you are going to have them younger then make them more skewed younger so that you don't have someone who's like parenting the children but i do miss um karen being in it but it's just it's interesting too when people talk about the mouths of others because last time i checked they all argue last time i checked they all argue so i say nasty things and say nasty things the only thing that I would say is that Candace does body shame the most. Like that's usually her go-to, which I don't like. But other than that, they all say horrible things and fight. So why are we so saying what one's I find, worse than the other? Um, what I find the most interesting, just, just that we're talking about Ashley specifically, is that Ashley's mouth since the very beginning has been so incredibly reckless. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which was the whole impetus and the reason why Robin even stormed into her restaurant in the first place, putting her finger yes. in her face. Yep. Because she says she says some wild yeah. stuff. And I feel like nobody pays attention to it as much. And there's there's obviously a reason for that. And I just I just think it's so bizarre. Um I just had to say that because I was like you can't possibly be like irritated by Wendy or Candace, for example, when for the most part, they don't even get in the mix like that. They're not really ready to like tussle verbally Mm -hmm. until someone disrespects them or until someone slights them. But Ashley is the one planting seeds and, you know, Mm -hmm. bringing up stuff and all that's like all the time, all the time. And that's the thing that feels like it's coming from like Ashley pulling stuff out, Giselle pulling stuff out um whereas the other women are being reactive to yeah. having stuff called on them and then they get in trouble for it mm-hmm. yeah you're supposed also, to just sit there and take it mm-hmm. right <laughs> and even this dinner mia allegedly didn't even get the whole story from peter he she said what's the beef and he said i'll tell you later and then she told the other girls and they filled in the blank mm-hmm. so they peter went to the table argument. and gave her a hug and left it, Why it, are well, you and, for a man who gave her a hug and left and, like, yeah Ashley even said, because Ashley even said, she called it out right there. She said, she whispered to me and she said, is Peter really that man? Because he just, get another. and when he went to the table, he said to Wendy, like, and this is honestly where it should have began and ended. He said, oh, you in my city, you don't call me. She said, check, check your text messages. She said that. Yeah. She said, check your text messages. He said, oh, okay. 
that's where it should have been over me because the thing that's killing me about mia and everybody that's like oh blah blah blah, she is so delusional and uh, this is why i don't find it but i don't find her funny i don't find her being a character for a show funny because it's bleeding into real life and look at what you what you just did you know what i mean like that that's why i just don't find her funny because you you can only live in delusion for so long however let's flip this script if Wendy would have come to the CEO and been like, hey, I know that you're maybe entering business to somebody that I consider family, somebody I'm so close with, what? why didn't you text them back? Wendy would, or Mia would have been like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about how I run my business. The same answer. They're like, And for Giselle and Robin to be off to the side, I, they were pissed me off so bad. They just looked like reaching. dumb and dumber. They were of oh, their, mm, that makes sense. Everything Mia said, mm, that makes sense. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. Shut up. Mm, right. It does not make sense. Like you, you don't even, they don't even give us a decency of playing mental gymnastics either. At least I will give Ashley Darby that. She tries to fool us. She don't do a good job. <laughs> well, actually she does because people like her, but like even to take it back with like, uh, you know, Kara said about what, like when she stormed into the restaurant, she was trying to tell Robin, well, this is why I, the, at the beginning of it all, this is why I, you know, do care about you and why I'm saying you shouldn't stay with Juan for the kids because my mom and her boyfriend and uh, they stay together for their kid. That ain't got nothing to do with Robin. Right. Mm-hmm. That ain't got nothing to do with Robin. That is, that is a reach. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's just like, th- if we turn the whole, the whole situation around, it would not have gone like that. Mm-hmm. No. I just um, find... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, did you pronounce your name? Zell? Zell, yeah. Zell, okay. I just wanted to continue with what Zell was saying, um, just with like Wendy, Peter, all that sort of stuff, Mia. Um, I also don't like Mia and the reason, and I could see where you're coming from, Nimade, with kind of likening her to Dr. Heavenly, except the biggest liability on that show is Mia. And I feel like she's so unpredictable and she is so delusional that she lies so much then she lies to cover up more lies. I just feel like she's, she, she's like a loose cannon. And that is someone that I don't like watching because to your point, Zell, it's like she does stuff and she, it's almost like she plays a a situation out in her head. And then when it doesn't go the way in real life, more people are negatively impacted than I think she realized. Then you see her backtracking on Twitter saying a bunch of nonsense. And so that's, that's why I don't like her. And I actually don't, I wouldn't, be mad if she's gone i actually yeah. don't want to see her come back for a number of reasons not just yeah. for the fact that she's a liar but the fact that she assaulted wendy like i, I don't want to see her i don't well i think for me because liars are like my major pet peeve like because it's so like it's like you said it's so dangerous especially in this day and age where like when you put something out there it's out there and there will be people who will believe it whether you can bring back facts that prove it's a lie people will still believe it and there's nothing you can do and it's is so upsetting to me that I feel like I have to not take Mia seriously. So I'm not at that level of irritation watching Mm -hmm. her because I have such a visceral reaction to people who like lie because it's so awful. Um, And so for me, I'm just like, oh, she's just a, she's just a character because otherwise I'd be like just out of, out of this world livid every episode watching her because you're absolutely right about her. I think like the the level of delusional that people like though, which I mean, it's, has is proven to be true. is like a Teresa Judice, du, Judice. Um, yeah, even though I have you know, there's being a flat out liar and yeah, exactly. Liar, and I, I exactly. And but I feel like I like I have an issue with some of the things that Teresa like has let come out of her mouth, like especially about like essay and stuff. But like Teresa is a dingbat. Okay, <laughs> like she you can physically see her thinking from time to time but with Mia I do think that because I have watched the episode a couple times I think that she really planned this whole thing out and that was solidified for me once I saw the first Twitter apology she tried to pass or non-apology that she tried to pass as apology where she said I was committed to entertainment I think she planned how she wanted the whole trip to go I think she knew from the beginning, like, I want this, this, this to happen. I want to argue with Wendy. I want to please Giselle and Robin, da, 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 da. 
And then when Wendy was like, what, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And not giving her the reaction that she thought she was going to give her. She, cause I really think she was looking for like a shut up from Wendy or something like that. But Wendy was trying to eat her crab cake. Right. And then she said, what? She's like, you're doing too much. And that like, even, yeah, even, well, even before she said that, she said, what are you talking about? And then Mia went, pointed her finger and said, don't fucking play with me. That's my family. I, that reaction, I was like, I know. I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? I was like, well, and that's when Wendy said, what are you doing right now? You're doing too much because you are. Mm -hmm. All I said to you was, huh? Okay. Because even if that was a situation, exactly how Peter and uh, Mia tried to sell it to us. What do you have to do with that? Right. I would be, don't come, if Joe Schmo off the street comes to me talking to me, a situation between me and my husband, I'm going to be like. Plus it's like, what What do you mean don't play with my family? Like, how is she playing? But even if she didn't respond to him, even though we know it's the opposite around, that's still not playing. Like, it was yeah. just so out of it. And I agree. I wouldn't be upset if Mia didn't come back because she is getting more and more of a liability where it's not like, oh, it's amusing. Um, and it's hard to watch too. Like when you, have it that like when it's so obvious mm-hmm. that you are self-producing it's oh, not yeah. as yeah, and I feel like she planned to throw that drink mm-hmm. and yeah. even though I knew the drink was coming because of when she threw it I was yeah. still like no oh. sense like I was like audibly gasped like yeah. this is why you're throwing a drink at she, her yeah. well like yeah it just didn't it, make any sense yeah. and everyone's saying like why is Wendy talking about her husband all well, Wendy said was but, I don't need to let go. And I like to put it like this. When you go on vacation from work, you just tell your boss, hey, I'm not going to be here from this day to this day. Let's play pretendies and act like Wendy and Peter were in business together, which they're not. She might have just said, I'm going to be unavailable from this day to this day because I have a prior obligation. She didn't need to tell him where she was going. Not And no situation where you turn this, do you need to tell that person? And moreover, about going to bar one, Mia planned that. You mm-hmm. heard Wendy say when the, she said, where are we going to dinner? She said, bar one. She said, of course, we're going to bar one. Mm-hmm. She said that they, I didn't plan to go here. Okay. Right. Had I been coming to Miami with the intent to go to bar one, then maybe that would have been different, but I still don't have to reach out to you. What right. Wendy said was the only man I let my comings and goings. No, no. My comings and goings is my husband. That makes perfect sense. Okay. And she said, maybe that's, maybe you and your husband operate like that, but uh, we don't play like that splash. Right. Yeah. She just wanted to throw that drink. She wanted she to have did, her yeah. drink she moment. That. Yeah, and she did it so poorly that she looked stupid. She was literally but, calling on her the entire time. Mm-hmm. And sad. Candace too, though. Candace as well, because she wanted to embarrass the both of them by giving that them bed. food to share. Sure. Then she has a private conversation with Ashley and Giselle. You know, Giselle hates her so much, and Ashley could take or leave Wendy, really. Sure. Talking about the fact that they're going to go to bar one, and Ashley's like, oh. Well, does Wendy know that? She's like, does she need to know that? It's right. like you you do all of this stuff just to mm-hmm. put her in this position. It doesn't go the way you want it to. And then it ended up biting you in the ass because right. you ended up looking stupid with the fact that- Like you after all of you. that work, all of that work to make her look bad, you still look classless. Mm-hmm. And she still shows why she has more class and handled the situation way better than I think a lot of people, a lot of people would. And it's crazy too, like the draw, like the, the things that they hold, and this is where I think colorism really plays a role in it, because I do think a lot of people on some level consider themselves to be superior to other people. Mm-hmm. And so when somebody does something who they think is less than that upsets them or makes them look bad, it's like the righteous indignation of the fact that that person, like, how dare you of all people make me look bad? And I think that's why they can't let go of anything that Wendy's done. Because how long has the show been on? How much have they all been arguing? What did Wendy ever say to any of them that was Thank that you. bad that they Thank can't you. let it go? Nothing. Yeah. Well, yeah. not only that, I want to like, because everyone, so I saw somebody say like, Wendy started all this last year with the plastic surgery. No, she didn't. Wait. Mia sat down there at, in her first interaction with all of the women, okay? And she acted like she was some plastic surgery guru, okay, when Wendy was talking about getting what she got done, all right? And then she told them, oh, I got my vagina done. And Robin and Giselle were like, who needs to get their vagina? Who needs to get it? And I forget exactly what they said, but Mia just forgives them. 
Okay. Right. Same thing with the cancer, um, you know, cancer scare at the beginning of the season. She just forgets him. And then she says to her, I expect that from Wendy, but not from you. Why? Okay. Right. What has Giselle shown you? Did I miss something where y'all became so freaking everybody enters this group wanting to be a green eyed bandit? And I don't, don't get it. understand. Yeah. No. I do not understand. And then for she was just love. It was the whole thing was so high school. It was giving me mean girls because like it's like she threw the drink to get indoctrined into the green eyed bandit society. Yep, that's and then they like. were running up after her because she did their dirty work. So like, let me get you a bandaid. Let me get you this. Oh my God. Um, she's upset. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. But I, I would have, I, when that server would have been handing Giselle her cake, I would have just been like this and I would have slapped it out of his <laughs> hand because I would have been like, fuck, fuck your cake. You right, sit there right. and eat cake. I would have been so violent. Okay. It mm-hmm. just doesn't, it just shows it's undeniable undeniable that there is an issue i my heart broke for wendy even Mm -hmm. because i knew what was coming throughout the episode but watching them get to the house you know wendy is in good spirits she is like you know like trying to bring the vibes have a good time with everybody it is so sad i they bullied her and like you i hope they don't bully her off the show like i'm glad that her and candace have a good friendship and i hope that they don't bully her off of the show because i feel like that's what they're trying to do I think that I think that that's what they're trying to do, too. For whatever reason, Potomac and Beverly Hills have it bad where they think that they can whoever they don't like, they can just get off the show. Those are the only two franchises that do that. I don't get it. Yeah. And And the audience is so horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The audience as well. Yep. And but you need people who to not get along. And what I've always liked about Potomac is that, like, I've never disliked any of them that much. You know, it's been like. When they're having an argument, I'm like, I can see this side. Like, I have my favorites, but it's never been like a, oh my goodness, I can't stand this person. And like, the more things are going on, the more like Robin and other people are getting to that point, which I don't really like. I but, never uh, liked we, Robin. I've me, always yeah, felt I, she was so useless. Yeah. yeah. But this is like worse. And it just like, like you said, Zell, like I, like watching Wendy, like have a drink thrown on her, somebody like Mia tried to hit her with her purse. And she's just there by herself and nobody's defending her. And she's all right. alone on this trip with like no friends. That's horrible. And the fact that they went to imagine. check on Mia instead of yeah. checking on her. Like yeah. what? Horrible. Up? Yeah. It is horrible. So, but I do want to say like, you know, at the end of this also, whenever I talk about a problem or issue, I also think of like, well, what do I want the solution to be? Right. I think a lot of people go into situations like this is a problem. Well, what does the solution look like to you? And this is one where I'm just like, what does a solution look like in this situation? Like, where, like, is there a room for healing? Like, is, to me, I'm always one for, like, cleaning out the wound to fix it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think unless they, until they get to the point where they can acknowledge that there's a problem, they're not going to fix it. And so right now I'm still at the scaping out the wound and acknowledging that there's an issue to be able to get to a place of fixing it. But, I, you know, I want to know what you guys think, like. Like, is there a way to move past this? What would that look like? Um, I would like, well, I think I probably, I'm sure everyone would agree. I think I would like to see us get back to Potomac, like before the darkness of season five, because it was really, really fun and lighthearted and it was fun shade and it was, you know, nothing was too negative um, and too toxic and it's starting to become like a super toxic situation. And I, after I watched that episode, I watched the last like half of it probably three times because mm-hmm. I really, I Same. really couldn't believe what I was watching. Same. I could not believe it. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking to myself, you know, obviously this is like another instance of violence and a woman being assaulted on camera. And there are so many varying opinions. And to me, I was like, why does it seem like from season five to now it's gotten so much darker and it's gotten so much more toxic. But to me, it seems like the common denominator in all of it is Giselle and Robin. And I feel like, um, there there comes a certain point on these shows especially if they are original cast members that they reach a certain point of power within the internal within the group especially if they help produce the show um they are given so much power and respect that i don't feel like they deserve entirely especially if they treat other people like crap on the show Mm -hmm. and i feel like when it comes to that they need to be held accountable for their colorism 
And you can talk to the group in general, but I do think that Giselle and Robin are mostly responsible for that and for enacting that and for almost encouraging groupthink behavior. Because how is it that there's a there's a scene at a table when he's the only person by herself and no one else says anything? No one else has any balls to say anything. There's something wrong with that. And these women are given too much power, number one. So I think heads need to roll, number two. They need to be split up. Someone needs to go. Or they can both go, to be honest with you, because Giselle doesn't do anything except be messy. Yeah. Um, So And Robin brings absolutely nothing. She's brought nothing since season three. So, I mean, that for me. And then uh, the last thing I would say is if we're going to do another part like four part reunion, um, the way they had Nicki Minaj last year, let's have like an actual expert for part four and Andy actually like give up his seat like he did last year so they can actually really address this and maybe open some eyes because I'm I'm tired. I, yeah, I completely agree. And for, I, I have my own personal problems with Nicki Minaj. Um, that was done for like, oh, because it, it's Nicki Minaj. That wasn't really done to help anything. So I think for y'all to have Nick bring Nicki in and give her her own part, you can bring somebody in that's actually going to be helpful and get through to this. I, you know, I honestly think, and people will probably be like, wait, what? I think if you take Robin away from Giselle, she might be fine. And as much as I can't stand Robin. I think if you take Giselle away from Robin, more will show. So that is why I'm fine with Giselle leaving. However, I know that's not going to happen. I think that they need to, before we even sit down, that I want the placement of the person, somebody who's going to talk, you know, a black woman to talk to them to be correct because i feel like if it's at the end you know everybody's exhausted no one's listening they want to be done more so if we do it at the beginning then you know it's going to be maybe or in the middle somewhere it's going to be a little bit more helpful i don't think that giselle is ever ever going to be i mean the woman's 53 years old or something like that i don't think she's ever going to recognize her colorist ways because she's older but also because she married jamal who is a darker skinned man. And she has, you know, daughters that are not light skinned. So I think she does not think that she can, she upholds colorist views because of her closeness to non light skinned people. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's just not true. Those are your daughters. You're going to think that they're beautiful no matter what. And her girls are beautiful. Don't be wrong. Um, But she it's, there needs to be a lot of unpacking in uh, with the audience too. I want to just like, I, I want to be like, Robin and Giselle, do you really think there's a coincidence, Ashley, too, that like y'all, the most of, I feel like the most of their audience, the people that like them are white people. Mm. I think that a big group, I know that they they have black supporters and black fans. I know that. I think that the it's not a coincidence that a lot of the people that you hear support them and stand by them are non-black people. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the black people that are supporting of them, I just... I don't know. I don't know. I, it's just one of those things where I get into, there needs to be some actual learning um, and we can get back to the fun. I mean, I'm tired of hearing everybody say like, it's just a reality show. It's just a, okay. Reality. Right. The word real is in there. Right. And these are, this is a real issue. You know, I don't, and I, Mia can go, I've never been able to stand her. I, it's very rare that I actively don't like a housewife that much and especially from the beginning and it's Mia. Mia is in my top five. I cannot stand that woman. Mm. I the, I actively do not like her because she has a lot of issues. She, for her to, she was online, you know, for her to have everything that she's had happen in her life. She also is in, in unison attacking Jacqueline in her family. Mm. Like, yeah, that whole thing with Jacqueline and- She called her her niece trailer. She said living in the trailer in the backyard. And they uh, opened see, up I, their home to you. I don't follow her on social. They, they, I, I just saw a screenshot. They opened up their home to you. And like, she, you're criticizing, you're saying, oh, because I guess her mom used to work for me. Uh, Jacqueline's sister used to work for Mia. 
Mm. She's saying like, oh, because you're she's a recovering addict. And I think everybody, but she's sleeping on the job. She's doing this. So which one is it, Mia? Which one is it? Do you support recovering addicts and you understand you have empathy for them? Or you want to be the big bad CEO and you're better than everybody? Like, g- give me a break. Right. Give me a break. Uh, so I'd be fine if she didn't yeah. show up to the reunion. I really would. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. She's very contradictory. Well, I can just hope that... Honestly, I really hope they bring in someone for the reunion because I really would like to see this conversation had amongst them because I do think they all have the intelligence level to have it um, and to have a really well thought out conversation and not well, almost all of them you can sit it out, but um, <laughs> to have you know this really great conversation. It's a very nuanced topic, but I think that led well that they could have it and um, it's not just in the minds of Wendy and Candace and I hate that that's. The narrative they're going with like oh they're just making it up because people don't like them like no it's more than that and we can we can see that especially as someone who didn't even like candace last year i mean i've always kind of liked her but also not liked her but i can still defend when she's not being treated fairly and i can still defend the fact that you know it's a very blatant sign of colorism that like her saying something harsh is viewed that much more harsh than someone else saying it well We'll see how it goes. We'll see how the rest of the season pans out. Hopefully you all join me back for the reunion recap and we'll see how we, the season overall goes. But um, thank you all so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate your time. Any last words any of you want to get out before we go? Mia is just really stupid because I want to break down something else. It's in my spirit. Why there's, you don't have to be a dumb kind of bully Mm-hmm. To think that you are going to get two grown ass women to sleep in a full size bed together. You knew that one of them was just going to leave. So what? What? Come on now. Those are two grown women who have their own funds. They would simply just go to a hotel. No sweat off their back. Either way, you turn that you look like an asshole. I you know what I wanted to mention, too? Robin, in that annoying interview where she was already lying, she said that she couldn't compare throwing a drink on somebody to someone being grabbed and punched in the face multiple times. Excuse me? On what world did Monique grab Candace and punch her in the face multiple times? Like, the exaggeration of it just to make her look worse. Like, oh, I was so livid. There's no, the other, yeah, exactly. And Robin, again, a obtuse okay stupid she did not say like what wendy is saying the only comparison to monique and candace that they are making is the reactions of giselle and robin y'all had a very strong visceral reaction to violence Mm -hmm. against uh from one cast member to another however at this point in time because you don't like me okay Right. You don't feel the same. And everyone's focusing on the drink. She tried to hit her with her purse too and broke her own nail. Okay. Yep. You, for them to be running to get her bandage, she broke her own nails. You should not be swinging a purse if you do not have the appropriate nail length. Nope. And there is <laughs> definitely no punching. So let's not, it's not like I think people forget they're on reality TV and we can pull receipts very mm-hmm. quickly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thank you again all so much for joining me to chat about this. Um, for those of you who are watching, I'll include the links for all of these lovely ladies below for you to check out their shows and their pages or just the different things that they have going on. Um, again, if you want to, if you haven't gotten enough on this topic, there was a previous one where we talked more in depth about the Ashley and Candace. And we also talked about uh, colorism on some other casts as well. So check that out also. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. Baby, you just kick your feet up while I kick back. I roll one with you by my side.